Hello, this is Matt and Jayadu channel. Welcome to the next episode of Jayadu JNDI tutorial. Last time we have logged into LDAP basics and started our work with attributes of directory objects. Today we're gonna continue this topic of directory services in context of JNDI and your context interface. This is what we'll go through in this video. First, We'll modify attributes of existing directory objects with modify attributes method and modification item class. Then our attention will be focused on bind method and we'll not only create new attributes but also discuss few situations that may occur during creating directory objects with attributes. After this and previous video you should have full knowledge of attribute capabilities in JNDI. Let's start with opening Apache Directory Studio. In this video, we'll work with person class or to be more specific is extension. Open an entry representing single person from people organizational unit. You will see that such entry has four values in attribute object class. In previous video, I told you that each entry may have only one structural class. In this case, there are three values that are structural classes. This is because this entry has in fact one structural class that is inet org person. Everything will become clear if you right click this class and select open schema browser and then object class description. Under super classes section you can see that this class inherits from organizational person class which is subclass of person class that inherits from top. That is root class of all classes no matter of the kind structural abstract or any other. In the schema browser you can also check what are allowed attributes for a given class. And for example for our inetorg person class you have to declare three obligatory attributes common name, object class that is obligatory attribute in top class and this requirement is inherited and finally surname attribute. There are also another 48 attributes that you can use, but it is not required. The fact that we have visited schema browser is important because we will need those attributes, their names and their properties when we will create attributes with JNDI. To check what are the properties of some attribute, simply click it. For example, common name attribute is not single valued, is not read only and so on. That's because all fields matching those flags are grey. To contrast, check display name from inetorg person class. It is single valued, so it means that you cannot specify multiple values for it. With this knowledge, let's now go to the IntelliJ or another Java environment and first focus on actual API for modifying attributes. In JNDI, there are three possible types of changes when you modify attributes creating, changing and removing. Each of them is understood simply as some modification. As a result of this, JNDI provides you a modification item class that represents a change that you want to apply. It consists of two things, a flag that specifies what type of modification it is and attribute that contains its ID and values. Let's say that we want to add a description to bend up in person. First, we will create a modification item. Type of action is specified by first parameter, that is an integer value. To make it readable, those values are encapsulated in the context interface. We can also access it through the right dear context interface. We will say that this modification item is supposed to create an attribute. Now we need to pass an information about actual attribute that should be created. You can do it by creating instance of basic attribute class with arguments name and its single value. We pass description as attributes name and jayadu as its value. Now let's go to actual method of dear context interface. It is modify attributes and takes a name of an object we will modify and a list of modification items. Our object is accessible by following name cn equals bendabin organizational unit equals people. 
We pass only one modification item, but we must pass it as an array. So we'll create a new one. Now run our example. After it finishes, open Apache Directory Studio and open Ben Dubin entry. See that a description was actually added. Dear Context also provides another version of modify attributes method that was created for cases when you apply the same modification type for many attributes. We'll use it now to replace the description. Again, we pass Ben Dubin's name as first parameter. Now, as a second parameter, we'll pass replace attribute in value. And as a third and last, an attributes object that tells which attributes in our case will be replaced, because that's what changes type is. Therefore, we have to create basic attributes instance. Let's say it will ignore cases. And in our example, we will pass to it one basic attributes class instance with description ID and JEDU updated description value. Of course, you can pass to attributes object as many single attributes as you want. Let's just comment previous lines of code and run it. Open Apache Directory Studio again. Refresh Ben Dubin entry and observe that its description has just been updated. Let us now try to apply more than one modification in one request. We'll create three modification items. First, we'll remove description attribute. Note that even if only attributes ID would be enough, we need to supply full attribute object. Its value doesn't matter, so we'll pass null in this case. Second modification item will update an email. And it will set its value to ben.dubin.new at jedu.com. The last item will add two titles to Ben Dubin entry. Mr. and PhD. Therefore, we need to create separate attribute object with title ID. And then, twice add to it value. First Mr. and then PhD. This attribute object we pass to modification item that has create attribute action specified. Finally, those modification items must be passed to modify attributes method. As always, we modify Ben Dubin entry, and now we will create an array of modification items and specify three items that we have just created. Running this example will show that all changes were applied. We can check it in Apache Directory Studio. What's guaranteed by JNDI is that changes passed in modification items array will be applied in order the way specified. So you could for example first remove some attribute and then create the same one. It wouldn't fail because by the time attribute would be created it would have already been removed with use of first modification item. Last but not least are limits when you modify attributes and use modification items. First, you can't create an attribute that already exists. You also can't apply any modification on attribute with name that is not allowed by classes schema. You can't also modify value of obligatory attribute to empty value. You can't remove an attribute that does not exist. And finally, you also can set more than one value for attributes that are single valued. In all those cases, you will get a naming exception during JNDI operation, like modify attributes or bind. You can check it on your own as an exercise. You will also get those exceptions when creating and binding an object in directory if you specify incorrect attributes data. And this is what we will focus on at second part of this video. We will discuss how to use attributes while binding a directory object.
For this purpose, we'll create a new directory object representing a person. We will use bind method in version accepting attributes. So let's create a set of attributes describing our object. First thing we need is specifying class of our object. It is inet org person stored under object class attribute. We don't need to declare all other classes like person or top since they will be automatically added during binding an object. There are two more attributes that are required in this class. First of them is sn that represents person surname. We will declare it as smith. The last required attribute is common name, cn. But since entry's name must be one of object attributes, we will simply declare it by passing a name to bind method. So let's actually invoke bind method on our initial context. We want to save this person in organizational unit people and have it saved with common name equal to John Smith. Now here's the tricky part. We do not pass anything as an object we want to store. If you pass here any Java object, it will be understood that what you want to store in directory service is Java object and in LDAP it would have object class equal to java serialized object. Also this directory object would have a bunch of attributes like java class name or java serialized data. You can check it on your own. We'll get back to this example in more details in video about JNDI's object factories and state factories. Going back to our bind method, as a third parameter we pass attributes that we have prepared before. Run this piece of code and go to LDAP server to see the results. Directory object representing John Smith person has been created and has attributes matching what we have specified. In this case, we pass null as a second parameter. This simply means that the only thing that is the source of attributes is actual set of attributes passed as a third parameter. But bind method for directory systems has also another useful property. You may pass null in attributes parameters. In this case it means that you don't want to specify objects attributes, but instead use attributes of the object passed as a second parameter. Of course, this means that this second object must have attributes, therefore it must be a directory object. And in JNDI it implies that it must be instance of their context. Since manual creating instances of their context is not a common practice, this thing is mainly used when you already have instance of their context and you want to save it somewhere in a directory system. A good example would be copying. Let's say that you want to back up all people entries in a new organizational unit called people backup. We will first create such organizational unit in our LDAP directory through Apache Directory Studio. To do this, right click JEDU Organization and select New Entry. Select Create Entry from scratch and click Next. Now from available list choose Organizational Unit and add it as a class of this entry. As a last thing, you need to specify its distinguished name relative to its parent. We'll simply say OU equals people backup. Click next and then finish. We will need a new backup people context in our example, so we look it up. Now we'll iterate through all bindings with an OU equals people context. For each of them, we retrieve object associated with this binding. We use it to supply parameters of bind method invoked on people backup context. A name of a new entry is the same as the name of actual entry representing single person. And an object is that person. As I mentioned earlier, we do not pass any attributes. We let JNDI itself to handle it and use attributes of object that is being bound. 
After running this example and waiting a while, you will notice that all data have been copied into Backup People organizational unit. I will skip the video to this point. Please notice that each entry has exactly the same attributes as its vis-a-vis -vis in initial people context. As an example and some form of training, you might try to write some code that will iterate through all backup people context and for each entry, will compare its attributes with its corresponding entry from people context. In their context, together with bind method accepting attributes, comes enhanced rebind method that accepts attributes. Its behavior and the way it treats attributes is exactly the same as their context bind method. The only difference is the same as in context interface when pass name is already bound to some object. The last method, unbind, removes object from naming or directory system, so there is no point in passing attributes during this operation. Therefore, there is no unbind method in overloaded form accepting attributes. Finally, there is also overloaded method for creating subcontext. It behaves exactly as bind method when second parameter representing object is null. Let's sum up different ways of creating the same object in directory system. There are three ways in which in this video's example you could create a directory object representing single person. Those ways are represented by following three equivalent fragments of code. In number one, you tell JNDI to take attributes from past object that is instance of their context. In second example, you pass attributes explicitly, and in the third one, you simply ignore passing an object and just create subcontext method that takes only name and set of attributes. Just to clarify whether it always works like this. It does not. The reason why here we could also bind a person using create subcontext method is because we specified end attributes of directory object manually. If you would like to move this responsibility to other component, you generally implement such logic in state factory that will be automatically invoked by JNDI. In such case you would simply use bind method. We'll get back to this example in the future. And that's basically all about their context API for binding an object with usage of methods accepting attributes. We have also discussed how to modify attributes with help of modification items. From this place, I invite you to the next video about search API in their context. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to vote up and subscribe to Jayadu. See you in the next episode.